is Aquila's dream when the resources get simplified. So they will walk you through some steeple chase questions associated with the anatomy of the lower limb and the anatomy of the pelvis. Believe me, it's going to be a lovely one. You just have to stick with me to the end. All right. So here is a very important part of the anatomy of the lower limb. In fact, it is also common to with the anatomy of the pelvis. The question will be, what is this structure? Yeah, and of course, this is the bony pelvis. Some will regard it as the pelvic girdle. Okay, but one important thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that you might be asked to be specific. What sex? This bony, this bony pelvis, it belongs to what sex? Is it a male pelvis or a female pelvis? So, and that's what I want to draw your attention to now. Understand that the male pelvis has this subpubic angle being very small, okay? The angle is less, but in a female pelvis, it is wider, okay? The subpubic angle is wider. You have to understand that. So, let me show you a picture of that. Okay, so... This is a picture differentiating the male pelvis from the female pelvis. And you can see in the case of the male pelvis, this pubic hack or the subpubic angle is about 60 to 70 degrees. But in the female pelvis, it is very much larger, okay? So about 80 to 90 degrees. So that's the most obvious thing to differentiate between the male and the female pelvis. Just check the subpubic angle. Once you notice it is smaller, that is a male pelvis, but if it is wider, that is the female pelvis. Another way is taking a look at the pelvic brim. The pelvic brim or the pelvic inlet is the structure right here. In a male pelvis, the pelvic inlet is at shape, more or less like a triangle. Okay, but in a female pelvis, it is wide and over in shape, okay? It is wide and over in shape. And all these anatomical features in the female pelvis basically serve to allow childbirth, okay? It is modified for childbirth. All right, so let's move on to our next model, okay? Apart from asking what structure it is, some parts on the body pelvis can be painted for example, we can have this structure right here, the structure I'm shading red, we can have it being painted in stipulations and you'll be asked what structure it is or what structures are inserting on it. Of course, what is this? Obviously, the iliac crest. It is the iliac crest. So apart from you knowing that it is the iliac crest, you have to know some important structures inserting on that area too. Okay, and I think I have a very beautiful picture of that. Are you seeing the anterior abdominal muscles? The thick origin or insert on the iliac crest. For example, now the external oblique muscle. Although right here, we're not really seeing the insertion. This is the external oblique muscle. Uh, there is a cut through here. It actually does insert on the iliac crest. Okay, it inserts on the iliac crest right there. Okay, now you have to understand too that the internal oblique muscle, the internal oblique muscle takes its origin from this same iliac crest. It comes all the way from the iliac crest and goes towards the linear harbor and the midline. Okay, so there's an important muscles inserting or originating from the iliac crest. We also have the gluteal muscles, specifically the gluteal maximus, gluteus medius. They take their origin from the iliac crest. Are you seeing them right here? Okay, let me get a beautiful marker. You see gluteus medius taking its origin from the iliac crest. We also have gluteus maximus taking its origin from the iliac crest. So those are examples of muscles taking origin or inserting on the iliac crest. Okay, now apart from the iliac crest, you can also have the wing being painted. Okay, that's the structure right here. The wing or the ala of the ilium the wing or the ala of the ilium okay so and um, one very important structure associated with the wing is the iliacus muscle okay let me show you a picture of that are you seeing this muscle right here this muscle taking origin from the wing of the ilium 
and going down to the femur to insert on the lesser trochanter. That muscle is the iliacus. Okay, so it is closely associated with the wing of the ilium. Okay, specifically a part called the iliac fossa, a very shallow depression within the wing. Okay, so note that. I also want to draw your attention to another part on this hip bone that could be painted, and that is the axis. Okay, this structure right here. This structure right here is the axis anterior superior iliac spine. Okay, some important structures like the sartorius muscle in the inguinal ligament they take their origin from the axis. Axis inguinal ligament, for example, it originates from here and goes down to the pubic tubercle to insert as inguinal ligament for you. Sartorius muscle too comes all the way from there and goes down down to the uh, to the tibia to insert okay all right another important structure i want to draw your attention to is the obturator foramen this fossa this uh this uh, foramen right there that hole is called the obturator foramen uh, one structure associated with it is the obturator membrane okay it's actually closed up in a real in a real um human okay i want you to note that foramen and do not confuse it with the acetabulum okay acetabulum is what we're having here the acetabulum is where the edge of the femur insert do not confuse it with the obturator foramen obturator foramen is a hole it passes through okay but the acetabulum is more of a depression into the um into the hip bone all right so note that an acetabulum structure is associated with it. We have the head of the femur inserting right there. Let's talk about the joints around the hip. But before that, are we seeing the acetabulum right there? This is the acetabulum where the head of the femur is inserting. And of course, this is the obturator foramen. Okay, so coming down to the joints around the hip okay there are three very important joints around you can see three right here although there are four important joints around the hip the first i want to draw your attention to is this one right there this is the joint between the lumbar vertebrae and the sacrum and that joint is called the lumbosacral joint okay we also have two lateral joints right here there is one right here there is another on this side. These joints are the sacroiliac joints. There are two of them, okay? Sacroiliac joints, okay? And that is the articulation between the ilium and the sacrum, okay? And then in front, we have the pubic symphysis, which is a very, very common joint, okay? The pubic symphysis is right there, okay? I also want to draw your attention to the um, sacrococcygia joint, although we can't see it right there, but let me show you a picture of it up here. The sacrococcygia joint is what we have here, and it is the joint between the sacrum and the coccyx. Alright, so that's that about that. The very first revision over what we've been saying so far. We started with the iliac crest, and we mentioned some important muscles that insert on the iliac crest. We moved down to the iliac the wing of the ilium also called the ala of the ilium and we mentioned that the liacus muscle is closely associated with that region then we move down to the obturator foramen and also the acetabulum where the head of the femur inserts and then we rushed down to the joints around the hips lumbosacral joints we have the uh, sacroiliac joints two of them right there and in front, what do we have? We have the pubic symphysis. And also a minor joint right there, but it is also important, the sacrococcygia joint. All right, let's move on to our next model, which is the femur. Okay, and on the femur, a number of structures can be asked. This is a summary of the joints around the hip. Okay, this is the femur. In recent, we are looking at the posterior part of the femur. And on this femur, a number of structures can be painted 
although right here we have in the white part this white part shaded right there don't worry you will understand what that structure is so here is the proximal part of the femur of course and here is the distal part of the femur so let's take them step by step now this is same picture of the same picture we have in here this is the exact picture right there the posterior part of the femur so starting with the head of the femur right so this structure right here is called the head of the femur and it is associated with the acetabulum of the hip bone it's inserted into the acetabulum of the hip bone but apart from that i want to draw your attention to something on the head of the femur there is a very important groove right here a very important fossa on the head of the femur okay that fossa is called the fovea capitis and a very very important tendon or i mean i mean the ligament a very important ligament takes origin from there i will show you a picture of that now okay are we seeing the head of the femur right here this is the head of the femur and here is the ligamentum teres taking origin from the fovea capitis the fovea capitis of the head of the femur so ligamentum teres takes origin from there and of course it inserts into the acetabulum so take note of that about the head of the femur on the head of the femur there is a groove fovea capitis and that's where ligamentum teres originate from okay so going back to that picture we've explained it now coming back to this very important trapezoidal structure what is that structure of course that's the neck of the femur okay so now i want to draw your attention to this projection this upward projection right here this structure is called the greater trochanter of the femur okay and the greater trochanter of the femur is associated with a number of important muscles the abductors of the hip joint abductors the inserts on the greater trochanter i'll show you a picture of those in a minute so and down here what we have is the lesser trochanter there's greater is on top lesser is below okay so lesser trochanter is the projection we're having down here let me show you a picture of some muscles inserting on the greater trochanter okay yeah here is one of them are you seeing the gluteus minimus the gluteus minimus and the gluteus medius they are very important abductors of the hip abductors of the hip and they take the origin from the iliac crest of course but they eventually insert on the greater trochanter of the femur okay so gluteus medius minimus are typical example of muscles interesting on the greater trochanter okay we even have the obturators internals and other rotators of the hip to inserting on the greater trochanter now the lesser trochanter don't forget this is a lesser trochanter right here the structure right here is a lesser, lesser trochanter you have to understand that some muscles to insert on it okay and a typical example is the iliacus we've mentioned this structure today now the iliacus is the muscle taking origin from the wing or the iliac fossa of the helium and the muscle takes origin from there but it goes down to insert on the lesser trochanter as a matter of fact this other muscle called the psoas major the psoas major is another muscle taking its origin from the lumbar vertebra both of them move downward move downward from a common tendon and a common tendon eventually inserts on the lesser trochanter and they are very important flexors of the hip joint all right let's move on to our next model uh now we'll talk about the linear aspira as the structure shaded white right here okay the linear aspira okay i have a better picture of that i will send the linear aspira right here here is the linear aspira and some important muscles take origin from there you talk about the vastus medialis of the quadriceps, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, 
even the adductor muscles, the adductor muscles to insert on the linear aspira. Okay, so note that now coming down to the distal part of the femur, the distal part is what we have right here. And I want to draw your attention to this structure on the media side. This structure on the media side is the media condyle of the femur, and this one on the lateral part is the lateral condyle of the femur and in between is a very very important structure called the intercondylar fossa or the intercondyloid fossa any of it is fine okay so you have to understand that the intercondylar fossa is a very important insertion point for the cruciate ligaments anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments they insert into the intercondylar um, Fossa, I have a better picture of that. Let's focus on this because this is the posterior part of the femur. And of course, here is the intercondyloid fossa and the cruciate ligaments are inserting into it. Okay, I think I have a picture of the cruciate ligaments. Are we seeing this? Yeah, of course, this is the distal part of the femur. What we have here is the distal part of the femur. And here is the lateral condyle. Here is a medial condyle. And in between is this intercondyloid fossa. Okay, intercondyloid fossa is where the anterior and posterior crochet ligaments are. In certain, as a matter of fact, those ligaments are taking their origin from the intercondylar eminence or the intercondylar tubercle of the tibia. Right, going back to uh, our model, I think we're done with the femur now, and it's time to move to our next model, and that's the tibia. Okay, now what you're having here is just the proximal part of the tibia. Here is a full picture of the tibia, and I want you to focus on this proximal part for now, okay? Of course, right here we have the lateral condyle of the tibia, and right here we have the medial condyle of the tibia, okay? But in between is this very important tubercle called the intercondylar tubercle, others will call it the intercondylar eminence. Anyone is fine, okay? So you just stick with the one you remember better, but I, I prefer tubercle, okay? So the intercondylar tubercle is where the cruciate ligaments, the cruciate ligaments I showed you, this is where they are taking their origin from, okay? So that's that about the proximal part of the tibia. But before I move on, I want to draw your attention to this very important structure right here. This structure is called the tibia tuberosity. And this is where the patellar ligament or the patellar tendon, this is where they insert. Okay, so that's that about the proximal part of the tibia. Now down here we have the distal part of the tibia and I want to draw your attention to this very important projection this projection is called the media malleolus okay the media malleolus arises from the tibia and you can palpate it you can go down to your ankle that projection on the media side of your ankle it is formed by the media malleolus of the tibia right and the one on the lateral part is the lateral malleolus and that structure is actually formed by the fibula we'll get here in a second let's do a summary of what we've been saying so far don't forget here is the lateral condyle of the femur here is the medial condyle of the femur okay and um, right here we have the lateral condyle of the tibia and of course right here too we have the medial condyle of the tibia now, in between, we have the intercondylar eminence or the intercondylar tubercle. That's where the cruciate ligaments are taking origin from and they are inserting into the intercondylar fossa of the femur. Right? So, that's that about that. 
And you have to understand that these crochet ligaments too can be pinned in steeple chairs, especially this anterior one. The anterior crochet ligament can be pinned in steeple chairs, and you'll be asked to identify it. As a matter of fact, here is a picture of that. Are you seeing the anterior crochet ligament right there? That ligament pinned is the anterior crochet ligament. Okay, so moving on to our next model, that's the fibula. Of course, this is a fibula. It's a very narrow bone, and there is a prosima part. The prosima part is associated with the head of the fibula, and there is a distal part. The distal part is associated with the lateral malleolus. Okay, so and of course, this is the shaft, the shaft of the fibula. But I want to draw your attention to something about the head of the fibula. Sometimes the head of the fibula can be tied. Okay, I think I have a model of that. For example, here, uh, this is the head of the fibula, and it is tied. And you'll be asked to identify a structure associated with the head of the fibula. And that important structure is the common perineal nerve. The common perineal nerve is closely associated with the head of the fibula. As a matter of fact, if there's a fracture to the head of the fibula, there is a very high probability too that the common perineal nerve will be damaged. So take note of that structure. Whenever the head of the fibula is tight and you're asked to identify a structure associated with it, just input the common perineal nerve. Okay, so here is a combination of the tibia and the fibula, and we are seeing the medial malleolus formed by the tibia, and of course the lateral malleolus formed by the fibula. All right, so that's that about that. Let me show you a very important model, and I want you to guess what the structure is. Can you guess what structure this is? Let me give you a clue. It is a sesamoid bone. Yeah, you guessed right. This is the patella. Okay, so the patella is a very, very important sesamoid bone. It acts, it acts as a pulley in the knee joint. It increases the leverage of the quadriceps tendon or the quadriceps muscle. So note that the patella is just as simple as that. Okay, and around the knee joint, some structures too can be pinned. For example. This tendon right here, okay, it is called the patella tendon or the patella ligaments. Any name is correct, okay? So the reason why it's regarded as the patella ligament is because ligaments join bones to bones, right? So, and this is the patella. If this is the patella, is a bone. And this is the ischia tuberosity, right? The tibia tuberosity, rather. If this is the tibia tuberosity, it means what we're having is a bone-to-bone -bone connection. So, ideally, it's meant to be the patella ligament, but any is fine, okay? So, and it actually arises from the quadriceps muscle. The quadriceps muscle gives rise to the quadriceps tendon. Quadriceps tendon crosses the patella and then becomes the patella ligament. Here is still another picture explaining the patella tendon or patella ligament okay so quadriceps tendon crossing patella becoming patella ligament okay now coming down to our next model can you guess what structure this is well it's not so clear here okay are you seeing it clearer now can you guess what tendon is tied here what tendon is that well, that is the extensor digitorum longus tendons. Okay, here is a nicer picture. Extensor digitorum longus tendons. They are very important extensors of the toes. Okay, extensors of the toes, and they insert into the phalanges, the digits right there. Insert into the digits. Okay, so note that this tendon can be tied in steeple chairs and be asked to identify it as the extensor digitorum longus tendons. On the media side, too, you can have this tendon around the big toe tied to. Okay, this tendon around the big toe is the extensor allosis longus tendon. Okay, so take good notes of both for the toes for the four lateral toes. The tendon is extensor digitorum longus. 
but for the big two, it is extensor aluses numbers. All right, so that's that about that. Coming down to our next model now, can you guess what structure this is? This structure tied right here. Let me give you a clue. The structure is coming all the way from the tie, and it is giving rise to a very condensed fascia or tendon. Can you guess? Okay, here is a better picture. The muzzle is right here, coming all the way from the hip, tensor fascia later, and then it is, con it is continuing downward as a thickened fascia or thickened tendon. Okay, it is regarded as a iliotibia band right there. Okay, now I also want to draw your attention to some important muscles around the leg. We talk about the gastronomus and the soleus. Okay, the gastronomus is the superficial muscle. Is 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 a superficial muscle in the posterior leg. Okay, why the soleus is deep to the gastronomus. So you have to be very careful. You have to check in steeplechase exam. You have to check. If there is a dissection, if they've dissected the gastronomus and it is reflected in a way, then you will know it is the soleus that is deep to it. But if the gastronomus is still intact and it is pinned, then obviously we know this is gastronomus. Just ensure you are very careful that you are not calling gastronomus soleus and you are not calling soleus gastronomus because both muscles are they are they are very big muscles. Okay, so you have to be very, very careful of which is which. Now, as a matter of fact, the two muscles they combine together to give rise to this common tendon. This common tendon is called the calcaneal tendon or the Achilles tendon. Okay, so and that structure too can be pinned in steeple chase. What is it? Achilles tendon or calcaneal tendon? Or you could be asked to give two muscles that are forming this tendon. And what is the, what are those muscles? Castronimus, soleus. They are important muscles forming the Achilles tendon. Okay, here is the picture of the Achilles tendon. I will send it. It's right there. Okay. Now moving on to our next model, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the gluteal muscles too are very common questions in steeplechase. For example, this first one, one of the cycling green, is a gluteus maximus, and trust me, you will recognize this muscle when you see it. And sometimes, too, this muscle can be reflected, and you will be seeing the gluteus medius. The gluteus medius is the muscle deep to the gluteus maximus, okay? So, just as we had in the case of soleus and gastronomus, don't confuse the structure. Always check if the muscles are reflected or not okay so right here gluteus maximus is intact but on the left side right here we have the gluteus maximus there is a cut through the gluteus maximus right here so we can now see the gluteus medius here is the gluteus medius and deep to the gluteus medius we have the gluteus minimus okay deep to it we have the gluteus minimus they will take good notes of these structures all right the functions gluteus maximus is a very important extensor of the hip okay the very important extensor of the hip joint why gluteus medius and gluteus minimus are abductors abductors of the hip joint okay that is actually the end of this lecture thank you very much for tuning into my channel if you find the video helpful do it to hit the like button and also subscribe when you are you subscribe to my channel you will have access to a number of videos videos designed just for you to nail success thank you very much